Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm going to read a, a prepared text, and then I will try to raise some of the issues before I sit down so that uh, we can generate a, a debate. I am happy to be here for the second time to be with you on this interesting topic of Africa, development, trade, and the economy. I think this topic is relevant, and I think also it's at the center of development uh, and prosperity of Africa. The battle we have in Africa, whether we are talking about trade, whether we are talking about economics, whether we are talking about politics, is essentially poverty, abject poverty. Africa has the, the largest deposit so far, various minerals, precious minerals, and yet we are getting only probably 1% of the global trade in these minerals. And therefore, we need to ask ourselves, what can we do? But let me start off by saying that uh, Africa is not a poor continent. I've said this contrary to what others believe, and I would like to repeat. Africa is not a poor continent. It is the people of Africa that are poor. I'm saying this because if you look at the resources we have, we could get out of poverty. But much of these uh, resources are not being processed on the continent. They've been shipped throughout the years, the last 50, 60, 70 years. They're creating employment and trade in industrialized countries and Africa still remains poor. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we get very low prices for our primary commodities. We are then processed in Europe and North America, create employment there, and the product is sent back to Africa at several times the prices. So we are losing twice. First, on the low prices of our commodities, Secondly, on the high price of the finished products that we are getting. So these are, I think, some of the challenges that uh, we want to look at. There are statistics available, I think, on the internet, so I will not bother you for that. But only to say that if the international community would agree that some processing or a good part of the processing be done on the continent, I think we could change the development equation, both in terms of trade as well as development. And as Louise was saying, the issue in Africa today is not of aid. We want investment. We want investment in uh, uh, agro-processing, value addition, processing of our minerals, so that then we can trade on the international market at a fair and a better prices. We cannot, as Africa, remain forever as suppliers of raw materials and minerals and expect we can get substantial gain from international trade. That never happens and did not happen. So the question will be, what do we do next? We also are faced with uh, scarce and limited financial resources, largely not because Africa is not a good investment uh, uh, area, but because of the perceptions of the financing institutions. By the way, any investment in Africa these days, whether it's industry or trade, will ac actually give you several times your returns than the same investment in United States and other developed countries. That is a fact. And yet, somehow, the international financial institutions have not realized that they could make money just for a song on the continent. And perhaps that will be one of the messages that we want to encourage other people. Now, in Malawi, we have a number of commodities 
that we are trading on the international market. We have uh, uh, tobacco, we have cotton, we have sugar. In fact, we've got ISO 9000 certificate as producing one of the best sugars in the world. But we have also tea, we have several other commodities. And yet, up to now, the share of our global trade has been very small. Why? Because these, as I said before, they're simply shipped out together with the employment. And I think it's a serious problem. And part of the problem is that uh, following from the colonial history, the, uh, there's always a, a feeling that uh, if you want to gain from Africa, you keep Africa underdeveloped. And this is totally wrong because a developed Africa, industrially, commercially, scientifically, and in, indeed politically, is a better trading partner for Europe and the OECD than a poor one. I would rather want, if I were to walk with somebody down the street, I'd rather have somebody I can walk with side by side down the road than someone I want to carry on my shoulders. And that's what Europe and others have been doing, trying to carry Africa on, on their shoulders in trade. And as a result, when they tumble, everybody tumbles. Now you've got Merrill Lynch, Mel, Mel Lynch, Mel Lynch and uh, the other companies. Indeed, if we ride on their back, we also fall. But we would like to walk. So in trade, as we have said in Doha, we would like to have the same advantages that uh, all other OECD countries have in trade, particularly in trade in commodities. We are told we have EBA, every, everything but arms. Any principle, that's what happens. But in practice, it's something else because uh, we don't gain from processed commodities. And when we send our commodities into the OECD markets, they face very stiff com competition. While at the same time, we face also in a gradual processing and commodities subsidies. So I think these are some of the things that we want to try and change in a new global relation. And uh, we believe that there is room for Africa to play its role on the international scene. We believe that Africa can contribute to the development of the global village. I often wonder, and I've always asked my colleagues in Africa, where is Africa in the global village? Because in any village, you have some people who are in the house drinking tea or whatever it is that they drink and enjoying music. Then some of them are in the veranda. Some of them don't have room in the veranda. They are in the yard, probably in the sun and rain. And then the others are on the fringe of the village. They haven't even got to the yard, let alone into the veranda. Where is Africa in international trade? In the Doha round of negotiations, where is Africa? And I think this is what we have to ask. If we are talking about a global village, then everybody should have a share, an equitable share, or a fair share of that global village. We do not. We don't have that share. And I would like to believe that some of the African countries, we are really, we are on the fringes of the global village. But we like to be an integral part of that global village.